Janine, a lot of the information that gets presented on the Glosser channel is of a fairly serious or sobering nature. But we are going through tough times, the entire world is, and people are struggling to find the real truth. There, there is a sea of information out there, but how much of it is reliable? That's a big question that many, many people are struggling with. I suppose in simple terms, my question to you is, is the situation a lost cause? Is, is there hope? Is there a way of turning this situation around? Is there a way of informing people, enlightening people, so they can handle the situation better for themselves and for those around them? Yeah, it's such a good question, Robert. I mean, I think it's a question on everyone's um, heart. They may not even be able to verbalise it, but many people are feeling so oppressed. But yeah, such a good question. And um, one I'd really love to answer. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to do a little bit of a, um, a repeat on some key points that we've covered and then lead into the answer. So what we've identified so far is the pandemic is the siege stage of a coming attack. Um, it is bringing what's known as the abomination of desolation, the, which is the vaccination ID, the vaccination bringing the identification, and connected to that Sunday rest, which is the mark of the beast, the mark of their authority to rule over you. This was predicted about 2,000 years ago um, in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Daniel 11. So basically, we are under attack and facing an invasion. Yes, these are absolutely dim, dark times. And looking into the face of the future, it's very... It's very daunting. We know many people are um, committing suicide. Many people are struggling with depression. Myself, I've been struggling with severe trauma as I'm encountering this information. So, But I'm very thankful that I have hope. And that's what I want to share with everybody. Um, is there a way to walk this back? Is there a way to mentally um, comprehend where we've gone wrong? And is there a way to rectify it? That's what we want to look at. We want to look at how can we find empowerment in this situation where we feel that we're losing our power. So let's look at, first of all, the question, why is this happening? I believe the template answers this question. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we've looked at um, the attack that happened on Jerusalem in 66 and 70 AD, and we've looked at what happened that led to this event, and we've gone back and we've gone to... 31 AD, when Jesus was crucified by the religious leaders because of his identity. Now, he fulfilled hundreds of prophecies. Um, the statistics on what he fulfilled that he had no control over, where he was born, um, the timing of his baptism, the timing of events that happened, the timing of his death, um, all of these things have been predicted. Um, they all... Um, emphatically emphasise that he was the Messiah and the Messiah as the Saviour, the Saviour of the world, so he came to save. So when he was rejected, effectively they were rejecting salvation. So we want to put this into our own time and our own framework and we want to look at um, how can we um, walk this back so that we too can have salvation because what Jesus bought was not just salvation from sin, it was also protection from our enemies. And um, it was eternal salvation. So yes, even if we do die, we know that we have hope. So that's what Jesus came to bring. And that's what we want to um, explore right now. So the event that brought about this um, catastrophic event of the destruction of Jerusalem and that is replaying in our day was the rejection of the identity of the Son of God. Now, he doesn't force himself on anyone and in his presence there's fullness of joy and his presence remains with us whatever we invite him to be with us. But if we reject him, he just goes. He's, not, he's a gentleman. He doesn't push himself on anyone. And so being Yah's salvation, that is the meaning of his name, Yeshua, his presence saves us from the enemies of death, the enemy of hell, the enemy of sin, 
and the enemy of Satan. Satan is his enemy, Satan is the rebel, but Satan wants to destroy all of humanity. And so he brings salvation. So the good news is that we can turn back to Jesus. We can turn back to him and appreciate who he really is and what he came to bring. Now there is a special message for this very time, which is what I would like to share right now. It's found in Revelation chapter 14, and it's given by three angels. And um, it tells us at the beginning, the very first message that this first angel brings is the everlasting good news. So this is what Jesus came and announced, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the kingdom of heaven is here. He bought in the kingdom of heaven. So he bought healing. He bought um, salvation from sin. He bought salvation from death. He bought victory over Satan and all of his um, agencies and all of the ways that he tries to trap us and trick us and lie to us. And so the good news is, is that we have salvation. We have a new identity. Every single one of us have uh, been given a second chance and we've been given a new slate. And it, it's available to us at the very moment that we ask for it and we receive it by trusting and um, so this angel in Revelation chapter 14, the, the angel announces that the hour of God's judgment is come. So the word judgment is a very heavy word and I do want to decode it. So there is a pastor who I'm working with, his name is Pastor Evans. He was the pastor that baptised me. And he's done a lot of research in the Bible on what judgment is. Now, it's not God sitting up there just waiting to catch us doing something wrong. No, he says that he's a God of love. A God of love doesn't do that. Judgment is the point at which we experience the consequences of our own actions. And he's the one who warns about them. So it's just like us dealing with our kids and saying, hey, look, you know, if you go and play in the street, you're going to get hit by a car or you may get hit by a car. It's a dangerous place to be. Please don't do it. But if a child's out in the street against your warning and they get hit by a car, that is the, the point of judgment. The point at which the consequences that you've warned about actually occur. So when we say the hour of God's judgment is come, we're experiencing the consequences of what has happened. I talk about I talked about what had happened in 1980 where and I haven't talked about it at too much length, but effectively um, the mainstream churches have been either surrendered to or been infiltrated by Rome and the truth about who Christ really is has been shut down. So God gives us the answer and he says the hour of God's judgment is come Give glory to him and fear him and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. In other words, worship the creator. So this is a salvation point for everyone. If we give in to the climate change agenda and the new world religion and the eco-theology conversion, etc., it leads us down the path of the worship of creation, which doesn't save us. But the creator made creation. He's greater than creation. He has control over creation. He's spoken into existence. And he alone is the one who saves. And so that is a call back to fear God and give glory to him. <clears throat> and so the second angel's message is that Babylon has fallen. Babylon being the world system that we currently live under. And it tells us because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, anybody who's researched the, um, the Pizzagate and the Pedogate um, stories that have been making their way, mainly through citizen journalists, um, will recognise that um, through these prostitutions, Rome, who controls the Epstein and the um, Ghislaine Maxwell um, pedo rings and um, pedo networks that they're in control of these and through them they have corrupted and um, affected all of the world that we live in this Babylonian system that we're under <clears throat> and so the call is to recognise that Babylon has fallen but God's kingdom is here and God's kingdom is coming in, in its greatest power and in its greatest measure that has ever been seen 
So the third angel's message is, and I'm going to read this one just so that I get it right. <clears throat> the third angel's message is, um, if anyone worships the beast and his image, that's a warning against worshipping the beast. So this beast is the beast from the sea. <clears throat> it involves a little bit of a prophetic decode. I can't go into it all now, but essentially it's the Vatican. Um, if anyone worships the Vatican and his image, so the Vatican is a religio-political system and the religio-political system is being set up on a global scale now under the world government, the COVID-19 world government and the climate change world religion or eco-theology or um, ecological conversion, whatever term you want for it. <clears throat> so if anyone um, worships them or receives his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he'll be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. So God is telling us here what the consequences will be if we take this mark. So we can all see, anyone who loves their freedom and cherishes their life can see this is going to be endangering. Um, this is the most severe warning in all the Bible. And so God is warning us that we need to stand up against it. We need to value our lives, value our freedom, follow Jesus' counsel to flee, um, to flee out of the cities. The cities are going to become dangerous because they've set up these, these technological traps here with facial recognition technology, 5G towers, smart meters in the homes. Um, the 5G towers can be turned up to 60 megahertz, uh, gigahertz, sorry, which takes all of the oxygen out of the air. And um, so this, uh, so the call is to listen, turn back to Jesus, don't lean to your own understanding, believe his words, he is truthful. And um, there's been many discoveries that have um, been that have been uncovered that give us evidence that God's word is true. Noah's Ark, the Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, Exodus route, and a cave underneath the place where Jesus was crucified. These all give us evidence that his word is true and that he can intervene, he will intervene, but it's an individual point now, individual salvation. And so there is hope. And uh, he's the God of hope, and he's the God of comfort, and he's the God of love. So it's really good news.